Well, it was a decent week. Scored 2,251 in the top 10%, moved up 1,000 spots, and just sitting outside the top 7,000. I'm pretty pleased with that, considering I had Matt Crouch and Stephen Cornelio on the bench and some pretty bad rookies on field. So, overall, I'm alright with it. Could have been a 2,300 a week, that's probably the most disappointing part, but considering the situation I was in going into the round, I'm pretty happy. Won all three league matchups, but obviously the thing I'm most pleased with is the god, Noah Bolter. We'll get to him later, but gee, he was, he was something else. But let's move on to the team. Starting off in defense as usual, Shannon Hearn, unbelievable. Traded him in and he gets 33 disposals, 13 marks at 94% efficiency. Unbelievable. Couldn't be happier really. Jake Lloyd, good to see him back at his best. Chipped in with a goal as well, so it's good to see. Zach Williams, brilliant first half, but did his hammy. I don't know how long he'll be out for. They say it was just tightness. So hopefully he plays against Melbourne, but we'll have to see what happens. Jack Crisp was good. Marty Hoare, I will take that. And Dersma, great first quarter, but I think he got half his points by quarter time. And it just went quiet for the rest of the game, so that was disappointing. And he went down a little bit in price. On the bench, Callum Wilkie, not great. Went down in price a little bit, and... Answorth, gee, we need money makers, and when you get scores like 26 from Answorth, 31 from Will Hayes, and 29 from Setterfield, ah, oh, it's just really, really disappointing. In the midfield, Lockie Neal, he was unbelievable. The other new recruit, Josh Kelly, he was very good. Paddy Cripps, he got hit by the Matt DeBoer tag and just had a really bad day. Nat Fife, great first quarter, and he went a bit quiet for the rest of the game, so I would have liked more, especially by Fife standards, but it's a ton, I guess you take it. Tim Kelly, quiet first half, picked it up in the second half, particularly during junk time. Stephen Cornelio there is the loophole captain, and we've got Hayes' 31 off the bench, and of course that was for... Grundy's 144, had it on Gorn, last video of course, but switched it to Grundy, they both got the same anyway, so that's all good. Sydney Stack, also a quiet first half, picked it up a little bit in the second half, that was good to see, and of course I've covered Setterfield and Hayes, just no good at all. And of course Matt Crouch and Bailey Scott didn't play in the rucks, Grundy and Gorn just Keep doing their thing, nothing more to say. And in the forward line, Michael Walters. He's a bit frustrating. I know I was burnt by him last year, but I went with him again as a pod, and he's been okay. It's not nothing to really rage about or anything. But, gee, if he played a full game like he did that fourth quarter, we could see some better scores from him. He was on 35 after three quarters, and he was everywhere in the fourth, and you just wonder, where the hell was that in the first three quarters? You just wish, just wish he played those first three quarters like he did the fourth. Because that's really positive, what we saw in the fourth. I guess because they put Fife in the forward line for most of the fourth as well. But still, it was it were positive signs in that fourth quarter. If only he played the first three quarters like he did that last quarter, could have been a lot better. But you take an 86 considering where he was at after three-quarter time. Paddy Dangerfield and Isaac Heaney both were very good. Good to see Heaney bounce back, especially. Danger, he injured his right ankle, had the ice on it in the fourth quarter, had the crutches as well, but I'm not going to look into that too much because I think Chris Scott said it himself, it's all part of the Danger show, I guess. A bit of an exaggeration. So we'll see where he's at going against... Gold Coast, uh, hopefully he plays, but I'm not going to look into these um, theatrics, so to speak. 
And Rowan Marshall, considering he was up against Grundy, you take that, I'm pretty happy with that output. He was going quite well after three quarters on track for the ton, but Grundy really did outplay him in that last quarter, but you still take that. It's a big challenge to go up against one of the best Ruckman, so it's good from Marshall. William Baker, not one of his best days, that's for sure. His break-even's up in the 70s now, so it's tough. Some of these rookies here at that point where they're going to drop in price and you only have two trades each week, so you just have to hope that some of these guys can beat these high break-evens. And the man of the week, Noah Bolter. He's tunned. Patience has really paid off. Who would have thought after the first month of footy that he'd get to this point? He wasn't he wasn't even cracking 30. And all of a sudden, an 82, then a 101, he's gone up 55k. Where when we needed cash generators, this man has stepped up and he's brought the side some much needed cash generation. So thank goodness for Bolter. Unbelievable. And on the bench, Willem Drew unfortunately got dropped. Worst timing for it. Wet weather game, he's an inside mid. And he was up against Gold Coast, so could have been a decent game from him, but he got dropped. Couldn't make any cash. So, it's disappointing. And Dylan Moore, pretty good start, but again, got a few of his points in junk time. So, not the best, but he's doing his thing. Hopefully, he can just keep making making the team some cash. So that will do it for the team. We'll sort this out. Put the best side on the field. Honestly, I think this is what I'll go with. I'll keep Bolt on field. And yeah, everything looks fine. Vice captain, captain. We got Jordan Sweet and Bailey Scott, the two donuts. Assume, uh, Drew went really well in the Sandful, so we'll see if he comes back. Plus he plays in the Saturday afternoon as well, so he wouldn't be the best loophole captain. Now all these guys are uh, Scott, Sweet and Drew, they all play Saturday afternoon, so it leaves me with a Sydney or Collingwood vice captain, and that's easy. I'll just leave it on Grundy. Could go Lloyd, could go Heaney of course, but we'll keep it on Grundy for now. And for the captain, it's tough. There's a few options. Cripps goes well against the Saints, but of course there's the steel tag that could potentially happen. And Lockie Neal going up against his old side in Perth. That's going to be a good game. Brisbane or Freo, I don't, I don't think either side tag. It's just a matter of who I'd want to go with as captain. Of course, Kelly in Dangerfield, they go up against Gold Coast. Josh Kelly, he goes up against Melbourne. You never know of Melbourne, they could use James Harms as a tagger. They didn't seem to against West Coast. Yo went off, Shuey and Gaff did their thing. No one really got tagged there, so he's another one to consider. But I'm thinking Neil, Fife or Cripps, one of these three. And for now, I will put on Neil. Going back to Perth to face his former team, I feel like I feel like he'll back it up, go for another big score. So captaincy goes to Neil for now. Really hoping Crouch and Cornelio get up this week, because I really don't want to play Setterfield and Hayes again. That's that was just a nightmare last round. Or I could I could put one of my mids. So in the event that Crouch and Cornelio, let's just say I'm forced to bench Cornelio again, could go danger into the midfield and field Dylan Moore, or hopefully Drew comes back. Actually, Drew is part of my trade plan, so it would be Dylan Moore. I could do that. But We'll field the best side for now and hope they all get up for round 10. But for trades, I'm thinking at the moment I've got it. Uh, Willem Drew out. 
and Callum Wilkie out. In comes Robbie. No, they've got a Robert. Yeah, Robbie Young. It's a week early, but there's, there aren't many. There's no rookies on the bubble this week, I don't think. And I liked how Robbie Young went. Provides some great energy in the Saints forward line. I feel like he'll get some games. And in comes Tom Stewart in defense. I, I was going on about Sicily. I know I've talked about him a lot. But after looking at fixtures a little bit, and, and in terms of timing as well, it it's just it just fits going with Tom Stewart now. Leaves me with 17.9k, and Stewart's more of a pod as well. I really like that as well. So that's how the team will look, and it also helps. Like time, like timing's great because if Zach Williams doesn't get up, I can just use Dozma to cover here, and I'd still have the the four primo defenders rather than having to play an extra. So that's that's good. So we'll just move it back. So this is how the team should look for round ten. I'm liking how the team looks. Aren't fourteen trades left? It's not great. But we've got Hoare, Stack, Baker, Bolter on field. So just the four rookies now. I'm planning to finish off my defense next week with Whitfield coming in. He had to get 170 and make sure he wasn't going to drop much. Just <laughs> That's just great. But he's a, he's a primo for a reason. He's a super primo for a reason. And he showed it against Carlton, that's for sure. But yeah, it's disappointing from a non-owner's perspective that he's not going to drop that much now. And he's got a 117 break even, which he can most certainly beat. So Whitfield comes in round 11. And after that is round 12, which is the first buy round. I'm not planning to upgrade then. The week after, round 13, planning on bringing in McRae. That doesn't finish my midfield because Kelly will obviously be shifted forward. So McRae would come in, and then Boak. They both have their buys in round 12, so hopefully I'd have enough cash to upgrade to those two by then. But we'll have to see what happens come round 13. But that's the plan at the moment, and then round 14 I'd plan to get in my last midfielder. I've got a few options in mind. Not sure, not sure who I want to uh, who I want to pick yet but I feel like I want it to be a pod but we're gonna have to decide on that later and that will probably do it that's how the team will look hopefully we can field the best team this week but of course I just feel like inj injuries will hit and I'll be stuck with some dud rookies on field but hopefully not hopefully we can Field the best team. So let's move on to league matchups. It's in my own league. I beat Tom quite comfortably. Won't look into that too much. And in Shorty's league, got another win. Up to second now in my own league. I'm at first. I'm pretty confident that I should stay in the top four in my own league. But in Shorty's league, to be in the top four right now, that's huge. Like I've said before, feel like I'm getting a bit lucky. In terms of the matchups I'm getting each week, my points against is pretty low compared to the other teams up top, so there's always a bit of luck involved, but it's good to be in the top four right now. Hopefully the team can keep it up, and it's huge being near the top right now just because of the fact that my teams are a bit injured right now. It won't be as big of a loss if I am forced to field all these rookies like if I had to field these rookies and my team was sitting at three and four in this league then it'd be panic stations but I'm in the top four so that's good to see so that will do it for the video hope you guys had a great week and 
I'll see you guys in the next video.